Hi, this is Jim Brisson, and today I'd like to talk to you about Little's Law and cycle time and how we can improve our software processes. Now, Little's Law talks about the time it takes to perform work. As typically written, L equals the number of items you're working on at any given time, lambda equals the rate that items complete, and W is the average time spent processing items. So let's try explaining this with a pipe visual. Little's Law says the number of items in the pipe equals the rate that items leave the pipe multiplied by the average time an item spends in the pipe. So if five items exit a pipe per hour and each item stays in the pipe for two hours, then there must be ten items in the pipe. You may want to pause and think about this if you need to, because I've got a few more coming. So let's look at delivery rate. Using a little al algebra, the delivery rate is equal to the items in the pipe divided by the time they spend in the pipe. So if 10 items are in the pipe, and each item is in the pipe for an hour, then on average you deliver an item out of the pipe every six minutes. Okay, that's great, but what does this mean in software? In software development, the items in the pipe are work items in development, and we call that work in progress. The time in the pipe is the development cycle time, and the, the delivery rate is just that. So the work in progress, often called the WIP, equals the delivery rate multiplied by the cycle time. Let's try an example. If three work items are delivered per day, and each work item takes three days to complete, then we'll have nine work items in progress. Calculating delivery rate, if we have nine work items in progress, and each work item takes three days, then we can deliver three items per day. Now cycle time works in a similar fashion. With nine work items in progress, assuming you deliver three items per day, the cycle time must be three days. Now I'm sure this is riveting, but you're probably wondering, how does this help me deliver software? Well, every boss I've known wants us to deliver more and more, right? So perhaps Little's Law can tell us how to improve the delivery rate. So if we want more work to come out of the pipe, maybe we can just push more work into the pipe. Maybe, maybe if you push really, really hard, uh, but that's not a sustainable approach. Pushing more work in is essentially increasing the work in progress. Little's Law shows us that, yeah, gee, that actually would increase the delivery rate. But that approach assumes there's more room in the pipe. And for software, more room in the pipe translates as developers slacking off, and they're really not. The pipe is just so big, pushing really, really hard will work a little, but also has bad side effects. So we want a different trick. We could try decreasing cycle time, which would increase the delivery rate, which would make the bosses happy. So what we really need to do is to shrink the pipe and in software terms, we want to decrease the cycle time, not increase the work in progress. And if you think about that, that, that really makes sense. Increasing the work in progress would result in more multitasking, leading to less efficiency, yielding decreased th throughput. Now, if we can find ways to decrease the cycle time, we'll not only get work done sooner, but according to Little's Law, we can improve the delivery rate. So, how do we reduce the cycle time? Well, first, focusing on cycle time will increase the focus on getting work done, which is great, of course. And I've seen it happen very naturally. When the team has very visual tracking and sees cycle time for their items go up, they try to prevent that from happening again. Another technique is to use smaller work items. Smaller work items will naturally complete faster. To get to small, we do more analysis of the problem so the stories are more ready for development and progress more smoothly. And if a story is blocked, less work is blocked when work items are smaller. We can also set work in progress limits for different development stages. Limiting the work in prog progress for stages causes team members to help each other when there is a problem moving work. And that's called swarming, by the way. So when the pipe is blocked, team members help one another to unblock it. With less overall work in progress, we'll, we'll have less multitasking. Now, visibility is your friend here. By making wait states visible, we can focus on reducing the time spent in wait states, focusing on eliminating waste.
We may also be able to work on items in parallel rather than serially. For example, we might structure dependencies to minimize end-to-end -end cycle time. But cycle time and this presentation are about more than just efficiency. Improving throughput should really be a secondary consideration to delivering the right thing. A few gold nuggets are worth much more than a pile of rocks. In general terms, effectiveness can be much more important than efficiency. Now finding gold in a pile of rocks is not easy, certainly not in software. Our understanding of where the target lies is likely flawed. Our initial attempts at hitting the target are also likely off course. So the agile lean trick to hitting the target and getting the gold is not to perform exhaustive upfront analysis. Rather, the trick is to use just enough analysis and then use multiple iterations with feedback loops. Getting feedback quickly and moving to the next experiment quickly will lead us to better solutions. So there you have it. We should measure, measure cycle time to help us improve both efficiency and effectiveness. So in summary, Little's Law gives us insight into software development. Cycle time is a valuable measure and drives appropriate behavior for software development. Techniques such as using small stories, decreasing the work in progress, and so on, result from watching cycle time and help us improve our development efficiency. Effectiveness is perhaps the most important goal, and short cycle time helps us there as well. Thanks for watching. This is Jim Brisson.